Welcome to Car Culture State, where we dive deep into the machines that define power, speed, and innovation. Today, we're shifting gears from the roar of muscle cars and the hum of high-performance engines on the asphalt to something that takes that adrenaline to the skies. We're talking about the McDonnell Douglas F-15 Eagle, the legendary fighter jet that's been ruling the air for over half a century. In this 2025 edition, we'll explore its storied past, its unbeatable combat legacy, and how it's evolving right now to stay ahead in an era of hypersonic threats and drone swarms. Whether you're a gearhead who appreciates precision engineering or just someone who loves a good underdog story turned dominant force, buckle up because this is the full throttle history and future of the F-15 Eagle. Picture this. It's the late 1960s, and the Cold War is in full swing. The United States Air Force is reeling from lessons learned in Vietnam, where American pilots faced off against nimble Soviet-designed MiGs that outmaneuvered the heavier F-4 Phantoms. The F-4 was a beast, no doubt, with its raw power and versatility, but it lacked the agility and climb rate needed for true air superiority. Enter the FX program, a desperate push by the USAF to design a fighter that could regain control of the skies. McDonnell Douglas, fresh off successes like the F-4 and the upcoming DC-10 airliner, threw their hat in the ring alongside heavyweights like North American Rockwell and Fairchild Republic. The requirements were brutal. Supersonic speeds, massive payload, all-weather capability, and enough thrust to outclimb anything the Soviets could dream up especially after rumors of the MIG-25 Foxbats blistering Mach 3 dashes. In December 1969, McDonnell Douglas won the contract. Their design was a game-changer. Twin tails for stability, a bubble canopy for unmatched visibility, and those iconic ventral fins that give it that aggressive, predatory stance. The first prototype, the YF-15, took to the air on July 27, 1972, from Edwards Air Force Base in California. Piloted by Robert, Buck, Anderson, it screamed into the sky with Pratt & Whitney F-100 engines belting out 23,000 pounds of thrust each. From day one, it shattered expectations. In a specially modified version called the Streak Eagle, stripped of paint and non-essentials, it set eight time to climb world records in 1975, rocketing from sea level to 30,000 feet in under three minutes. That wasn't just engineering flex, it was a message to Moscow that America's skies were off-limits. The F-15A entered service in 1974, with the two-seat trainer F-15B following suit. These early birds were pure air superiority machines, armed with an M61 Vulcan 20mm cannon and up to 8 AIM-7 Sparrow or AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles. The radar was the Hughes APG-63, a pulse Doppler system that could track targets at 100 miles while dodging ground clutter. Pilots loved the fly-by-wire controls, which made it feel like an extension of their own reflexes. By 1978, the upgraded F-15C and D models arrived with conformal fuel tanks that hugged the fuselage like aftermarket side pipes on a hot rod, extending range without dragging down aerodynamics. Production ramped up, and soon Eagles were patrolling the frontiers of NATO Europe and the Pacific Rim. But the real test came not in training runs over Nevada but in the unforgiving crucible of combat. The F-15's baptism by fire happened not with the USAF but with the Israeli Air Force, who snapped up their first batch in 1976. Israel named them the Baz Meshershal, or, Bronze Eagle, and they wasted no time proving their mettle. On June 27, 1979, during Operation Honeypot over Lebanon, an Israeli F-15A downed a Syrian MIG-21 with an AIM-9, marking the jet's first kill. That was just, the appetizer. In the 1982 Lebanon War, Israeli Eagles racked up 82 confirmed victories against Syrian MiGs and even a pair of Soviet-supplied SAMs in a bizarre air-to-air -air twist. No F-15 was ever lost to enemy fire. Pilots described dogfights where the Eagles thrust to weight ratio over one, one let them loop and roll like nothing else, turning potential defeats into routes. Fast forward to 1991, and the USAF got their turn in Operation Desert Storm. 
Iraqi forces had the fourth largest air force in the world, bristling with MiG 29s, Su 24s, and Mirage F 1s. Coalition Eagles from the 1st, 3rd, and 33rd fighter wings flew thousands of sorties, escorting bombers and hunting for threats. In one legendary engagement on January 19, Captain Rhonda Cornum's wingman, Captain Eric, Mace, Schmidt, splashed a MIG-25 with an MROM missile at beyond visual range, the first combat kill for that weapon. By war's end, F-15Cs claimed 34 of the USAF's 37 air-to-air -air kills, with zero losses. Ground crews marveled at how the jets returned with missile rails empty but airframes intact, a testament to their ruggedness. The Eagle wasn't just winning fights, it was rewriting the rules of aerial warfare, emphasizing beyond visual range engagements over the knife fights of Vietnam. The F-15 didn't stop evolving with its air-to-air -air prowess. By the mid-1980s, McDonnell Douglas saw the need for a strike variant to replace the aging F-111 aardvark. Enter the F-15E Strike Eagle, first flown in 1986. This bad boy added a second cockpit for a weapons systems officer, conformal fuel tanks as standard, and hardpoints for up to 23,000 pounds of bombs, including laser-guided GBU-10 paveways. The rear seat became a mini mission control center, with multifunction displays handling targeting pods like the Lantern for night strikes. The first combat deployment came in 1991, where Strike Eagles penetrated deep into Iraq, dropping precision munitions on Scud launchers and bridges. One unforgettable moment, an F-15E using a 2,000-pound bomb to down a hovering Iraqi hind helicopter, the only air-to-air -air kill with a bomb in history. Through the 1990s and 2000s, the Eagle family saw action in every hot spot. In Operation Provide Comfort over Kurdistan, F-15Es enforced no-fly zones, while in the Balkans during Allied Force in 1999, they notched kills against Yugoslav MiG-29s. The USAF's 493rd Fighter Squadron at RAF Lakenheath became Eagle Aces, with Captain Jeff, Claw, Wong bagging two MiGs in a single mission. Post 9-11s, Strike Eagles hammered Taliban positions in Afghanistan, flying the longest continuous combat mission ever, 15.5 hours with multiple refuelings. In Iraq and Syria, they provided close air support, their APG-70 radars picking out targets in dust storms that grounded lesser jets. By 2007, the combat tally stood at over 100 kills, zero losses, a record that's held firm into 2025. That's not luck, it's superior design, from the titanium leading edges that shrug off bird strikes to the redundant hydraulics that keep flying after battle damage. Now, let's talk specs, because numbers tell the story of why this jet refuses to fade. The baseline F-15C measures 63 feet 9 inches long, with a 42 foot 10 inch wingspan and a height of 18 feet 6 inches. Empty, it weighs 31,700 pounds, but max takeoff jumps to 68,000 pounds. Those twin Pratt and Whitney F-100 PW220 engines crank 58,000 pounds of thrust with afterburner, pushing it to Mach 2.5, over 1,650 miles per hour, at 45,000 feet. Climb rate, 50,000 feet per minute, enough to kiss the edge of space in under a minute. Range is 1,100 nautical miles on internal fuel, stretching to 3,000 with tanks and tankers. The avionics suite includes the APG 63B 3 radar, scanning 120 degrees and tracking 14 targets while engaging 6. Add the joint helmet mounted queuing system, and pilots can snap their head to designate a bogey for a missile lock. But 2025 isn't about reminiscing, it's about reinvention. The original F 15C and D models, workhorses of the fleet, have been phased out from active duty. The last active F-15C flight happened on January 24 at Kadena Air Base in Japan, a poignant handover after decades of Pacific patrols. Some linger in Air National Guard units, but the torch passes to the F-15EX Eagle II, Boeing's latest evolution. Born from the Qatari F-15QA, 
the X hit the skies in February 2021, and by 2025, 8 are operational with more rolling off the line at 2 per month. It's not a total redesign, it's a supercar upgrade to the classic chassis. Under the hood, the F-15X boasts General Electric F-110 Gay-129 engines, each pumping 29,500 pounds of thrust for a top speed still at Mach 2.5 but with better fuel sipping for 1,200 nautical miles combat radius. The airframe is beefed up for 20,000 flight hours, twice the original's life, and adds two extra weapon stations for a 29,500 pound payload. That's 12 MROMs slung under the wings, or a mix of hypersonic missiles like the AGM 183AARRW that no other USAF fighter can haul in quantity. The cockpit is all glass now, with 29 inch panoramic touchscreens and the advanced display core processor 2 crunching 87 billion operations per second. Fly by wire controls make it dance like a drone while the AN-APG-82 AESA radar paints targets at 200 miles, immune to jamming. Electronic warfare gets a massive boost with the Eagle Passive Active Warning Survivability System, or EPAWSS, which detects threats, jams radars, and deploys decoys faster than you can say, missile warning. It's integrated with the Legion POD's infrared search and track, spotting stealthy foes without emitting a blip. And in a nod to the future, the X's open architecture lets software updates plug in like apps, no hardware ripouts needed. By late 2025, the first EPA WSS retrofitted F-15Es arrive at RAF Lakenheath, bridging the old guard to the new. This evolution isn't happening in a vacuum. The USAF faces peer threats from China's J-20 and Russia's Su-57, plus swarms of cheap drones that overwhelm stealth alone. The F-15X fills the gap, acting as a missile truck for F-35s and F-22s, launching standoff weapons from afar while the stealth birds penetrate. It's cheaper to operate, about $29,000 per flight hour versus the F-22's $60,000, and shares logistics with existing Eagles, saving billions. Boeing's ramping production to 90 units in the pipeline, with fiscal 2025 budgets greenlighting 18 more. Squadrons like the 142nd Wing in Oregon's Air National Guard are transitioning, keeping stateside defenses sharp. Imagine a scenario in 2025, tensions flare in the South China Sea. An F-15EX launches from Anderson AFB on Guam, tanks up mid-air, and vectors toward a carrier group under threat. Its radar fusion with if board sensors spots incoming cruise missiles at 300 miles. EPA WSS blinds the guidance radars, while the pilot cues a salvo of hypersonics that arc over the horizon at Mach 5. Back home, that same jet could patrol the homeland, integrating with ground-based radars for rapid response. It's not just a fighter, it's a force multiplier in an age of joint all-domain operations. Of course, no legend is without its close calls. Remember the 2007 grounding after a Missouri F-15C broke apart in a training mishap? Cracks in the longerons from fatigue halted flights worldwide, but upgrades since then, spar replacements and service life extensions, have made the fleet tougher. Incidents like the August 2025 F-15E mishap at Seymour Johnson remind us of the risks, but the Eagle's safety record remains stellar, with over 900,000 accident-free hours. Log. As we wrap up this deep dive, it's clear the F-15 Eagle isn't just surviving, it's thriving in 2025. From its Cold War roots to its hypersonic future, this jet embodies American ingenuity, the kind that turns blueprints into unbeatable machines. Whether dogfighting MiGs or slinging next-gen munitions, the Eagle soars on. If you're as hooked as I am on these engineering marvels, hit that subscribe button on Car Culture State for more on the vehicles that push limits, from streets to stratosphere. Drop a comment. What's your favorite F-15 moment, or which fighter should we cover next? Thanks for watching, and remember, in the world of high-speed pursuits, it's not just about the ride, it's about owning the sky. See you next time.